Hey Satterfields, uh, this is Travis Collier, uh, Corey's math teacher. I just wanted to show you this really quick example of how the rainbow method works. And it really is needed when you have a number other than one out in front, because otherwise the regular method that we use in class won't work, where we just find those two numbers. But basically all you have to do is draw a rainbow between the first number and the last number. So let me show you what that looks like. Just like that. Now notice the 6 and the 6 are what the rainbow lands on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply those two numbers. 6 times 6 is 36, so I'm going to write that at the top of the rainbow. Now, this is my new multiplying number. That means I need to multiply to 36, and I need to add to the middle number, which is 13. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. So now I need to find two numbers, two numbers that I got to multiply to 36 and add to 13. So when I think about those two numbers, what instantly pops in my head is 9 and 4. So I'm going to go ahead and write those down. 9 and 4 are going to multiply to give me 36, and 9 and 4 are going to add to give me 13. Okay, so now I know what two numbers I'm going to use. Now I break up that middle term. I'm going to use 9 and 4. Remember to put an x on both because when you make a 9x and a 4x, those are going to add up to be 13x. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the first term with this first number that we found, and I'm going to group the second number that we found with this last term over here. So this is what it's going to look like basically. You're going to have parentheses where you're going to have 6x squared, I just brought that down, and I need a 9x, so I'm going to put that right here. So this and this. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to group, are you watching, this and this. So let me put that right here. 4x plus 6. Once again, I'm grouping this with this and this with this. Now what I want to do is look at both parentheses and take out the greatest common factor. What do these two terms have in common? Well, a 6 and a 9 have a 3 in common, so I'm going to take that out. And what do x squared and x have in common? At the most, they have 1x in common. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. All right, so what am I left with to get back to 6x squared? i got to multiply by 2 to get back to 6. So 2 times 3 is 6, right? And to get back to that x squared, I need another x. So I'm going to put that right here. Bring down my plus, And I need to multiply by 3 so that 3 times 3 will equal 9. Okay, so now I want to look for a GCF in this next parentheses right here. Notice that 4 and 6 are both even numbers, so it's pretty obvious that they have a 2 in common. Let me go ahead and bring that out. Now, what do I have to multiply the 2 by to get back to 4x? i got to multiply that 2 by a 2x. That's going to help me get there. Bring down your plus. And what do I have to multiply 2 by to get back to 6? It's got to be a 3, all right? So now, go ahead and look at those two parentheses. They must be the same for the rainbow method to work. And it turns out they are the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge them both into one copy. I get 2x plus 3. And then, remember those GCFs that we took out? Those are the things that are outside the parentheses. I need that 3x and that 2 to be in the parentheses of their own. So besides that, sorry, beside that, I'm going to write 3x plus 2. Notice I'm putting a plus down because that 2 is positive, and now it's factored. All right, so go ahead and take a good look at this and use that to help you on the quiz question. Uh, thanks for watching.